Hey, Patrick Jackson here, broadcasting from Medellin, Colombia. Before we get started on your webinar slash podcast, do yourself a favor and click that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner, and then click the notifications bell. That way we can help you in your journey to achieve all your learning Spanish goals. And if you'd like to attend the live Zoom webinar so that you can practice your Spanish in real time with our Spanish instructor, Paulina, to register for the live webinar, just go to learningspanishlikecrazy.com forward slash webinar. We have the live Zoom webinar twice a month on the first and the third Wednesday evening of every month. You know, te lo pierdas, don't miss out. To register to attend our live Zoom webinar, go to learningspanishlikecrazy.com forward slash webinar. Empecemos ya. Let's get started now. Bienvenidos to the Learning Spanish Like Crazy webinar. I'm Patrick Jackson. I'm the host for tonight's webinar. And our Spanish instructor is Paulina from Medellin, Colombia. But I'm in Sao Paulo, Brazil right now, trying to take my Portuguese to the next level. So tonight, Paulina is going to teach us how to, con how to conjugate Spanish IR verbs in the present tense. After Paulina gives us her lecture, if you like, I can unmute your mic. That way you can answer Paulina's questions or exercises in Spanish, of course. So now I'm going to turn the screen over to Paulina. Paulina? Hola a todos. Eh, ya voy a compartir pantalla. Pueden ver, can you see the screen? Yo sé. If you can see her screen, please type in the Q&A, yes, or in Spanish, sí. Okay, yes, everyone can see it, yes. Okay. Okay. Entonces, como Patrick mencionó, hoy vamos a aprender cómo conjugar los verbos que en español terminan en ir, en el tiempo presente simple. Uh, so, Patrick said, uh, we are going to learn today how to conjugate the IR verbs in Spanish in present tense, the most simple. Um, uh, vamos a recordar cuándo usar el presente simple, acciones que están pasando en el momento que se habla, hábitos o rutinas o dichos y refranes. So let's remember how to use this conjugation that it's present simple, actions that are happening in the moment we are talking, uh, habits, routines, and sayings also. Eh, esta es la lista de los verbos que vamos a eh, trabajar el día de hoy. Tienen la traducción ahí al frente. This is the some of the verbs we are going to use today to learn how to conjugate the regular verbs because there are some exceptions of IR verbs and it that verbs are conjugated in a different way but today we are going to focus in regular verbs. Entonces tenemos abrir, compartir, cumplir, decidir, describir, escribir, recibir, vivir, discutir, permitir, partir, existir, interrumpir y sufrir. Entonces, ¿cómo vamos a conjugar estos verbos? Vamos a eliminar la letra I y la letra R y vamos a reemplazarla por eh, las letras según el pronombre que estemos trabajando. So, how we are going to conjugate this verb? We are going to eliminate the ending of the verb IR and we are going to change that letters for another letters depends of the pronoun. Entonces el pronombre yo lo vamos a cambiar por la O. The pronoun I, we are going to change the IR for the letter O. Uh, the pronoun you, we are going to change it uh, for ES. Uh, el, ella y usted vamos a cambiarlos por la E. He, she, you. We are going to change it for the letter E. 
nosotros y nosotras, vamos a cambiarlo por imos, eh, for we, we are going to change it for imos, ustedes, ellos y ellas, vamos a eliminar esa i y esa r y vamos a cambiarlo por en. For you and for they, we are going to change the ir and change it for en. Entonces acá tenemos un ejemplo un poco más claro de cómo vamos a conjugar esos verbos. El verbo de este ejemplo es subir, que significa to go up or rise. There's a more specific example of how we are going to conjugate this verb. Entonces vemos que acá solo nos quedamos con el inicio del verbo, eliminamos la i y la r y cambiamos según el pronombre. So we can see that we eliminate the IR and we are going to add the letters depends of the pronoun. Yo subo, I rise, tú subes, you rise, él, ella, usted sube, he, she, you rise, nosotros o nosotras subimos, we rise, ustedes, ellos o ellas suben, you or they rise. Acá tenemos otro ejemplo con el verbo añadir. There's another example with the verb add to add. Entonces hacemos lo mismo. Eliminamos la letra I y la letra R y cambiamos según el pronombre. Eh, so in, in this case we do the same. We eliminate the IR and we change it for the letter depends of the pronoun. Yo añado, I add. Tú añades, you add. Él, ella, usted, añade, he, she, you, add, nosotros o nosotras añadimos, we add, ustedes, ellos, ellas, añaden, you and they, add. Eh, en el pronombre yo, con el pronombre yo es más fácil porque en las tres terminaciones de los verbos que pueden ser AR, ER o IR, eh, siempre va a terminar con la O, con el pronombre yo. Eh, so, in the case of the pronoun I, eh, always, it eh, doesn't, matter, doesn't matter if the verb ends with AR, ER, or IR, we are going to change it for the letter O in all the cases, eh, if it's a regular verb. Acá hay algunos ejemplos, eh, algunas oraciones. Mi mejor amiga vive en Madrid, my best friend lives in Madrid, los aliens existen y viven en Marte, aliens exist and live on Mars, nosotros no abrimos las ventanas de la casa, we do not open the windows of the house, la iglesia no admite que las personas entren con ropa corta, The church does not allow people to enter with short clothes. Yo no coincido con la opinión del presidente. I do not agree with the president's opinion. So uh, in this case, we can see it never change. It depends on the pronoun. Entonces, ahora vamos a hacer algunos ejercicios. We are going to do some exercise. Patrick, do you want to give some recommendations? Yes, using your control panel on your on your Zoom interface, raise your hand, and when you raise your hand, I'll unmute your mic so you can answer Paulina's questions. Okay. Entonces, aquí vamos a completar de las frases. We are going to complete the sentence. Who wants to participate? Who wants to? Um, Michelle has a hand raised. Michelle. Ad admite. Admite. Can you uh, read the, se oh. the complete sentence? Yeah. Lucía Please. siempre admite sus errores. Muy bien. Lucía siempre admite sus errores. Yeah, Do you I'm want to answer on. the next one? Well, I already moved on to the next person. Okay. <laughs> no um, worry. Well, 
I thought I had Jane had raised a hand, but looks like Jane lowered her hand. So let me see who. Okay, now it's back. Jane, oh, oh my, I lost you again, Jane. I've got a call on someone else. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Ado Soji. Nosotros discutimos sobre el político en clase de debate. Muy bien, nosotros discutimos sobre política en clase de debate. Tiempo para una pausa comercial, damas y caballeros. Time for a commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. Just for watching our webinar slash podcast, I have a special offer for you. And it's called Learn Conversation Spanish Like an MF. And I'm also going to tell you how to get it completely free. And if you're wondering if this Learning Spanish program is for you or not, then let me ask you some questions. Are you sick and tired of using apps that do not feature native Spanish speakers, but use machine learning and synthetic voices, which leave you with an awful sounding Spanish pronunciation and accent? Are you sick and tired of using apps that use synthetic voices that make it almost impossible for you to understand normal, everyday Spanish speakers? Do you want more than just an app that only gives you a badge that shows you use the app for days, weeks, or even years, but still can't speak Spanish well enough to hold a conversation with a four-year-old Spanish speaker? If you're ready for a learning Spanish program that's going to give you what it takes to speak and understand conversational Spanish with complete confidence, and you want to get this program absolutely free, in the description of this video, You'll find a link to go to Audible or Amazon.com. You can get Learn Conversational Spanish like an MF completely free with a free trial to Audible. And I guarantee you, after using this program for 30 days, you'll find yourself speaking Spanish like an MF. And in case you're wondering, MF stands for Master of Fluency. And we've only used native Spanish speakers in this program so that you develop an authentic Latin American Spanish accent and pronunciation. And just in case you're a visual learner, we've also included a bonus video version of the program, which includes its own free mobile app. That's in addition to the audio version of the program that you'll get from Audible or Amazon.com. After you get your copy, make sure you install the free Audible mobile app to listen on your smartphone or tablet, or if you prefer, you can listen on your laptop without using a mobile app. And if you've never heard of Learn Conversational Spanish like an MF, it's the number one best-selling learning Spanish program on both Audible and Amazon.com. As you can see from this screenshot taken from Amazon.com, it's beating popular learning Spanish programs such as Pencil of Spanish. You can also click that same link in the description of this video and go to Audible or Amazon.com and see the success stories from hundreds and hundreds of Audible and Amazon customers and see what they have to say about learning conversational Spanish like an MF. Now back to our webinar. Who wants to answer the next one? Someone, we have quite a few people here, but okay, J Jane, I keep losing you. You raise your hand and before I can unmute your mic, your hand is lowered. Who wants to give it a try? Any volunteers? Okay, now I got you, Jane. Jane? Jane? Jane says you have your mic still muted. Okay. Los niños okay, escriben go. en sus cuadernos. Lo que la profesora uh, escribe en el tablero. Super bien. Los niños escriben en sus cuadernos lo que la profesora escribe en el tablero. ¿Quién quiere continuar? Charlotte? Charlotte, do you want to get this? I have to take it. Oh. 
when it, see whenever you yeah. like, there's there's a um the unmute thing blocks my uh, blocks my screen, so I have to take it off, and I don't know why it does that. Oh, because we get, it does that so that we don't have too many people, more than one person muted at the same time. I believe right. that's the issue. Then I have to turn around and try to uh, you know take it off my screen so I can see the so I can see the sentence. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. So I do hear you, but I'm just trying to. Okay, got it. Okay. Mi perro sufre cuando se queda sola en la casa. Mi perro sufre cuando se queda solo en la casa. Muy bien. I, I think we can do two per person. Charlotte, do yeah. you want to answer the next one? Oh, sure, that's fine. Tú no crees que existen los fantasmas. Muy bien. Tú no crees que existen los fantasmas. Who wants to give the next one a try? Hopefully someone who I have not called on already. Anyone I have not called on, I'm seeing the same hands. Remember that the best way to learn a language is to try and make mistakes. Don't worry about it. If you don't answer correctly, we are here to learn. Okay, so I will call on Michelle again. Michelle? Ustedes cumplen sus deberes? Muy bien. Ustedes cumplen sus deberes. And we can, um, well, since there are two on this page, I, I'm going to go on to the next person. Cynthia. And Cynthia, you can answer these two. Cynthia? Whenever you're ready, Cynthia. Okay. Yo vivo in Alemania. Muy bien, yo vivo en Alemania. Tú vives cerca del parque. Tú vives cerca del parque. Muy bien. So I'm going to move on to the next person. Who wants to answer these? Someone can answer all three of them. But someone who I haven't called on already, I'm seeing the same hands over and over again. Mm -hmm. Someone who I have not called on already wants to give it a chance, wants to give it a try. If not, I will call on the same people again. Charlotte? Charlotte? Whenever you're ready, Charlotte. Yo existo, tu existes, ella existe. Muy bien, yo existo, tu existes, ella existe. Who wants to answer 12 and 13? Hopefully someone who I haven't called on already. Anyone, any volunteers? Any, any volunteers, someone who I haven't called on already? Okay, I will call on... Um, Cynthia. Cynthia? En las noches de Inverner, no me cubere, cubero, no. Me Cubero 
con dos cobijas. En las noches de invierno me cubro con dos cobijas. Nosotros discubar o unas tumbras antiguas en una exportación por Egipto. En el caso de nosotros añadimos imos, nosotros descubrimos unas tumbas antiguas en una expedición por Egipto. Anyone else? Any volunteers? I see the same hands. No one the same hands. Okay. Um at a soldier. Well, I see someone else. Well, I haven't caught on yet. Helma. Helma? Helma, whenever you're ready. Looks like you still have your mic muted, Helma. You have to unmute your mic. Can you hear me? Yes, we Hello. can. Existo. Nosotras uh, existimos. Ustedes existen. Ellos existen. Nosotras existimos. Y ustedes existen. Hey, who wants to give this a try? Do I see any names that I haven't called on yet? Anyone wants to give it a try? That's that's new here instead of the same people over and over again. If not, I'm gonna call on the same people. Okay, at a soji. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh well, it's it's actually. Close to the pronunciation is Adesoji. Adesoji. Yo asisto a clases de ballet en las noches. Si no, si no asisten, si no asisten a clases, uh, los bienes te van a cancelar la materia. Me guía, asiste a clases todos los días. Muy bien, yo asisto a clases de ballet en las noches. Si no asistes a clases los viernes, te van a cancelar la materia. Y mi hija asiste a clases todos los días. Next, who wants to give it a try? Who wants to give 20, 21, and 22 a try? I'm someone who I haven't called on already, hopefully. Anyone else? Anyone new? Okay, if not, I will call on Michelle. Michelle? Mi mamá parti. Parti. La pastilla a la mitad para mi hermana pequeña. Mis... Mi mamá parte la pastilla okay. a la mitad para mi hermana pequeña. Ok, siguiente. Mis hijos escriben un poema para el día de la madre. Muy bien, mis hijos, mis hijos escriben un poema para el día de la madre. Nosotros compartimos todas las navidades en familia. Super bien, nosotros compartimos las navi todas las navidades en familia. Let's give number 23 a try. Anyone who I haven't called on already? 
Nanavo call on Charlotte. Charlotte? I'm here. Nosotras decidimos convertirse en la pijamada. Muy bien, nosotros decidimos comer pizza en la pijamada. You can also give this one a try, Charlotte. Okay. La universidad no admite estudiantes nuevos cuando ya, ya han empezado las clases. Muy bien, la universidad no admite estudiantes nuevos cuando ya han empezado las clases. Okay, who wants to give 25, 26, and 27 a try? It's in the same hands. Anyone new? Anyone new who wants to give it a try? Okay, I will call on and Jane. Okay. Um, yo compro con mi parte de un trato. El padre de Sofía siempre ande uh, pimienta a su comida. Su jefe no les uh, permite faltar al trabajo. Yo cumplo con mi parte del trato. El padre de Sofía siempre añade pimienta a su comida y su jefe no les permite faltar al trabajo. Let's give these three a try. The volunteers. We'll call on Helma. Uh, ellos um, describen, él describe, tú describes. Muy bien, ellos describen, él describe y tú describes. Thirty-one and thirty-two. It's like uh, Michelle is the next in the queue. Michelle. Los niños interrumpen a la maestra cuando está dictando la clase. No me gusta cuando me interrumpes. Súper bien. Los niños interrumpen a la maestra cuando está dictando la clase y no me gusta cuando me interrumpes. Interrumpes. Muy bien. Charlotte is next. Charlotte, you can answer these three. Charlotte? I, I got it. Okay. I just I just clear the screen. Okay. Okay. You can minimize the screen. I, okay. Cada ni oh, excuse me. Cada noche escribo algo en mi diario. Usted uh what is it? Uh oh okay. Usted escribe canciones muy bonitas. Nosotros escribimos el ensayo para la clase del jueves. Muy bien. Cada noche escribo algo en mi diario. Usted escribe canciones muy bonitas y nosotros escribimos el ensayo para la clase del jueves. Okay, I'm going to call on Hamlet. Helma? En Navidad, si, siempre. I'm looking for the verb. Oh. Recibe. Oh, recibo una postal de mi hermano mayor. Muy bien, en Navidad siempre recibo una postal de mi hermana mayor. I lost the chat window. I'm trying to bring it back up. There it is. 
Okay. I think Hilma is next. Hilma? Whenever you're ready. Do you abrain la bantania? Nosotras? Um, compartimos contenido para aprender español. Usted recibe bien dinero de algún familiar en el extranjero. Okay, en la primera, tú y yo, como somos dos personas y me incluye a mí, es nosotros. Entonces, tú y yo abrimos la ventana. In this case, because it's you and I, it will be we. So, we use the conjugation of we. Tú y yo abrimos la ventana. Muy bien, en nosotros compartimos contenido para aprender español. Y usted recibe dinero de algún familiar en el extranjero. Okay, I will call on at a soji. Marcelo, su, sube todo tipo de videos a sus canales de YouTube. Muy bien, Marcelo sube todo tipo de videos a su canal de YouTube. You can also answer the next, if you like. Uh, ¿Dónde vives tú? Yo vivo en Los Ángeles. Muy bien, ¿dónde vives tú? Yo vivo en Los Ángeles. Who wants to give the next one a try? Hopefully someone that I haven't called on. I've seen the same hands over and over again. Okay. Um, Jane? Sí. Ustedes permiten a las personas comer en la oficina? Usted um, permite a las personas comer en la oficina. Súper bien. Ustedes permiten a las personas comer en la oficina y usted permite a las personas comer en la oficina. Muy bien. Let's give these three a try. We'll call on Michelle. Michelle? Yo aplaudo la decisión del presidente. Me parece sensata. Aplaude. Ah. Oh. Me parece sensata. Aplaudo. I'm not sure. Um, yo, yo abro. Los regalos, regalos un día después de Navidad. Okay. Nosotros par, partimos la torta antes, antes de terminar la fiesta. Muy bien. Yo aplaudo la decisión del presidente. Me parece sensata. Yo abro los regalos un día después de Navidad y nosotros partimos la torta antes de terminar la fiesta. Muy bien. Charlotte and then Cynthia, unless um get any anyone new to raise in. Charlotte. Here we go. El público aplaude, aplaude a los niños luego de, de su presentación. Muy bien, el público aplaude a los niños luego de su presentación. You can answer this one too if you want to. Ana Maria, uh, what is, I'm trying to figure, where is the verb? Is the verb the same one? 
no, 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 no. O sea, no. decidir, de verb is no. decidir. No. Ana María decide que Europa entra en la colección. Muy bien, Ana María decide que ropa entra en la colección. Ok, voy a decir Cynthia es next. Cynthia. Mi hermana y yo um, partía, par, compartían la ropa. Mi amo, Rodrigo, vives, vive en Cartagena. Los estudiantes de literatura escribas muchas Quantons. Ok, mi hermana y yo compartimos la ropa, because it will be we, we share the clothes. Okay. Mi amigo Rodrigo vive en Cartagena y los estudiantes de literatura escriben muchos cuentos, because it's they, they write a lot of his. A lot of stories. Anyone who I haven't called on, but you're running out of time. Do you want to give it a try? The verb is escribir. I don't know what, why it's not here. Yeah, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to call on Jane. Jane? Sí. La autora escribe historias sobre su infancia en su nuevo libro. Muy bien. La autora escribe historias sobre su infancia en su nuevo libro. We got three more. Um, let's give these a try. I believe... And the soldiers will be next. Okay. Nosotros uh, compleamos. Ustedes complen. Yo compro. Muy bien. Nosotros cumplimos. Ustedes cumplen. Y yo cumplo. Let's give these Who three a try. this question? It's a question about this one. One question, mm -hmm. um, Michelle. I'm not quite sure how to do it. How to answer? Oh, um, oh, present tense. Which are present tense? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, recibo, recibe, recibimos. Muy bien. Recibo, recibe, recibimos. So it was A? Yeah. So what was it? Okay. Nosotros al al uh, we, uh, com, com. nosotros compartimos el almuerzo. Ellos comparten los apuntes antes del examen. Tú compres habitación con tus hermanos. Compartes, Entonces, compartes. Uh -huh. Nosotros compartimos el almuerzo, ellos comparten los apuntes del examen y tú compartes habitación con tus hermanos. Ok, so now we're going gonna... to going to have a Q&A. So if anyone has any questions about tonight's topic, um, just type it in the Q&A and Paulina will answer. Um, we already have some questions, I see. 
Nico said he had a problem with his microphone, so he wasn't able to participate. And Michelle asked, when is the G silent? Can you answer that, hey, Paulina? Do you remember the word where you noticed that it's silent? If you can, Michelle, if you can give us the example. Egipto. Um, so she can. Okay. And Egipto. Okay. But the letter G with the A, the O, and U sounds ga, go, gu. But in the case of when the G is with E or I, sounds he and he. So that's why Egipto is pronounced that way. It depends on the vocal. And Nico wants to know when is the upside. When is the upside down question mark used? The inverted question mark. I don't understand the question. Well, I, I can answer that. Okay. The, the inverted question mark is used anytime with a question you put at the beginning of a question. However, mm -hmm. informally, when Spanish speakers write on Messenger or WhatsApp, no one uses a question mark. But if you're writing formally, you should use the inverted question mark at the beginning of a sentence. Oh, uh, yeah. In academic spaces or, or at work, you should use the those, the two question marks. But yeah, we when we're speaking WhatsApp or with some friend, we just use the final. Okay. Any other questions? If you have a question about tonight's topic or questions about Spanish in general or Latin American culture in general, please just type it in there in the Q&A as opposed to the chat. Anyone else have, have any other questions? If you have a question, please type it. Last call for questions. Any questions about tonight's topic or conjugating Spanish verbs or Spanish vocabulary? Any learning Spanish question that you have, please type it. It doesn't look like we have any other questions. We don't have any other questions. We're going to wrap it up for tonight and we will meet again two weeks from tonight. Oh, Michelle, ask. Yeah, uh, the letter J sounds with all the vocals the same way as the G, ha, he, he, ho, hu. So yeah, jefe, it's pronounced like in the way of the G with the A. Yes, half is like a English H sound. Okay. Daryl has Hello, a question. Everyone. It's the first time I hear that expression, nadie va en contra de su bolsillo. Might be an expression from another country. Yeah. And I think, oh, okay. I, I know what I know what he's what he's trying to write. Nadie va a encontrar de su bolsillo. No one's going to find your your pocket. Uh, 
That's what it, yes, that's what it, that's what it has to be. Nadie va a encontrar de su bolsillo. La escucho en México. No one's going to find your pocket. Oh, you heard it in Mexico. Actually, I don't know what that expression means. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I hear that expression. Maybe it's more popular in Mexico. Mexico, yes. And maybe a Mexican expression. Mm -hmm. And someone else has a question. Day and days they can mean from in English. When can you when can you tell when to use them in Spanish when they both mean from? Mm. Actually, I think in Spanish we use both words in a lot of cases. For example, boy. De Madrid a Barcelona, but you can also hear voy desde Madrid a Barcelona. We can use de and desde, and it's not incorrect. But yeah, both mean from in English. Some of these things you really just have to, you just learn from experience. Like, you, you know, someone would never say, from experience, if you speak a lot of Spanish, you'll know someone will not say, yo soy desde los Estados Unidos. They're going to say, yo soy de los Estados Unidos. Mm -hmm. And you just, um, not because you memorize the rule, but just from practicing conversation. Mm -hmm. Do we have another question? Nico. Sorry, but I must go now. Okay, well, thank you for attending. Thanks. Thanks so much. Anyone else? Charlotte, she gave an example of one to use Thursday and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that it's, as Patrick say, we don't have a, a specific rule in Spanish for that. It's about practicing. And in that way, it will get more natural to you when to use this day and when to use day. Because there are some cases when you can use both with no distinction and some cases that you need to use a specific one. Okay. And Michelle wants to know, how can we practice more conversation while in the U.S.? Well, there are WhatsApp groups. Well, there are Facebook groups. And if you go into the Facebook groups, you'll find people that have WhatsApp groups. And in the WhatsApp groups, you can um, not only can you type, but you can record a message and people will hear your message, Spanish speakers will hear your message and they'll give your feed, they'll give you feedback. And they'll also leave messages in English so you can give your feedback. That's one yeah. way if you don't already have someone to practice with. And there's some apps that that also help. For example, Tandem. Uh, this app is for uh, speak with native people from another country, so they help you with your conversation. Let's see, any other questions? Gerald says he started a, a simple group at his community, at his local community center. Felicitaciones. Anyone else with a question about learning Spanish, whether it's about grammar or vocabulary, tips, anything? So please type it. Okay, can you answer that? Um, well, well, uh, I'll, voices from I'll, Joe. Well, I'll read it first. 
Uh, Helma wants to know, she says, she wants to know the correct, or she has a question about the pronunciation of yo, because sometimes she hears yo, and sometimes she hears yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the pronunciation is yo. Maybe because in English the J has that sound, but in Spanish the J it has another sound. If I read J O in its in Spanish, will say ho, but the pronunciation of yo is yo. Well, I, I think she what she means, for example. Like, um, I have friends from Mexico. When they come to Medellin, none mm -hmm. of them say Medellin. They all say Medellin. So sometimes okay. the Y and the double L in Spanish are pronounced, depending on where you are. Sometimes the Y and the double L is pronounced like Y and yo-yo. And other times they have that J sound, like in Jane. But Maybe it's a country team, the pronunciation of each person. For example, in Argentina, they pronounce a uh, different the letters, but the, the correct pronunciation will be yo. Well, I think it's a regional thing because if that's the case, mm -hmm. yeah, someone could say everyone in the two million people in Medellin are mispronouncing it because they say Medellin as opposed to Medellin. So it really depends on the region. Both are acceptable. You can either use the J sound as in Joe, or you can use the Y sound as in yo-yo. Yeah, we will understand what are you saying. So there's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions about Spanish, whether it's on tonight's topic or another topic of learning Spanish? Any questions? If not, we're going to wrap it up. This is the la your last call to type whatever questions you have in the Q&A. Okay, any more? Can well, someone, well, Jane wants to know if there's a schedule for upcoming webinars. We're doing them on the first and the third Wednesday of every month at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's the plan. That's the schedule we have right now. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Anyone has a question, please type it. Now we are going to close the webinar and we will meet again two weeks from tonight at 9 p.m. Um, Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific time. I believe that will be on April 17th, if I'm correct. Any other questions? Um, Dow wrote something, I'm not, not sure. Do you know what he, that means? Did you know? Legio. Oh, Pelagio, Pelagio, Pelagio. But two, uh, I'm not sure about the English that you wrote. Two. Oh, to pick, to pick. A palillo. Okay. Palillo just, de dientes. And you just use the, the J sound. <laughs> <laughs> you use the J sound as opposed to the Y sound. Mm hmm any other questions? And by the way, from um, Daryl, from my experience, depending on what 
what part of Mexico they're from, some Mexicans will use that that J sound for the Y or double F. But in Mexico, it's definitely more common that you'll hear the Y sounds in yo-yo. But again, it depends on the region. Okay, any other questions before we wrap it up? If anyone has a question, please type it in the Q&A. De nada, Daryl. Looks like we don't have any other questions. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming. Muchas gracias. We will see you in two weeks from tonight on April 17th, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Hasta luego. Ciao. Ciao. Hey, just a reminder, if you'd like to attend a live Zoom webinar so that you can practice your Spanish in real time with our Spanish instructor, Paulina, to register for the live webinar, just go to learnspanishlikecrazy.com forward slash webinar. We have the live Zoom webinar twice a month on the first and third Wednesday evening of every month. No te lo pierdas. Don't miss out. To register to attend a live Zoom webinar, go to learningspanishlikecrazy.com forward slash webinar.